Hey, what's up, car fam? Today I'm answering the question, is the Civic Type R a good investment? Now, when I say good investment, I'm referring to does the car depreciate fast? Does it hold its value or does it go up in value over time? Now, just a quick disclaimer, this is not professional financial advice. I'm simply sharing my opinion and everything that I could see from my experience from searching online. Let me dive into the numbers and then let's see basically what the trends have been for this car um, and what we can kind of predict for the 22, 2023 model. So I'm here on cargurus.com. This video is not sponsored by them. I'm simply using this to be able to pull some historical data on pricing. So I pulled data from January 1st, 2018. This car came out in 2017, but just for a rough estimate, let's start with 2018 all the way through now. Um, so of course the 2023 is not on sale yet. So we're just looking at everything from the 2017 model to 2021. So looking at this graph here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, or this chart, we can see obviously a bunch of <laughs> changes since you know 2018 but the car roughly started around i think it was high 36,000s or so um, when it first came out um, and then the price incrementally went up over time but looking at 2018 the average selling price looks like for a little bit um, was around 39 at the beginning as we scroll down here, we can actually see what the average price was for like cars sold and things like that. So 2017, the average price was 40,811. Um, and again, that car was around 36 when it first came out, tons of dealer markup. This is the first time we had saw a dealer markup on these cars. And then over that course of that entire year, it went up a little bit over four and a half percent as far as what the price was. And then as we go to 2018, you can see these the average selling price for this car is what people were paying for started to go up. So 2018, it went up to 41,940. I'm assuming, um, like I said, that's probably including dealer markup and things like that. 5.99% is what it went up for that year compared to the previous year. And then 2019, that's when things started to like creep even more where you see a bigger jump. So it went from 41,940 as the average price to 43,623. And then um, 2020, things started to really <laughs> change even more. Of course, we know a lot happened in the world and then a lot exploded with the car industry too. So um, 45,822 was the price. And then now we're looking at an average, or not out now, but 2021 average selling price of $50,633. So it's a 9% increase year over year on that one. So looking at all of those numbers, we could see basically, especially as we look at this graph here, the price just starts to really skyrocket um, starting in January. So now that we have the context of, okay, the price started here and went up to where it is now, of course we know there's the chip shortage and things like that, but this car also just has picked up so much more interest compared to at first. A lot of people were sleeping on it, weren't really sure about it, the styling, things like that. Now we're at a point where people know exactly what this car is about and they know looking at these numbers over the past few years that the value of the car has gone up so let's say for instance you purchased this car back in 2018 and let's say you did pay the average price of 40,811 make your car payments a couple years later now that same car depending on how many miles and things like that. But let's just say for a buffer, you're at 45,000. So the ideal situation in any car, of course, is to not have it depreciate quicker than what you're paying on it. You want it to, you know, ideally be worth more than what you owe on the car. So for the people that, let's say, did get fortunate and they bought this car at 38,000 and now they have relatively low mileage, let's say they go to a car Carvana or CarMax or things like that, and they do get $45,000 for the car. Now they've pocketed, you know, a little over, you know, 7,000 or so for the car. So um, just kind of looking at that historically, basically the long story short is if you can get this car um, closer to MSRP, no matter what year you buy it, the trajectory of this car going up in value is pretty obvious. 
cycle. Now we see that, of course, there's the chip shortage portion and things like that too. But even that aside, you could see even from um, looking back, you know, over the past couple of years that the price of this car has gone up in value and especially now. So this is why it's really important to, again, try not to pay too much over because for example, people that are getting the 2021 model and it's selling for 54,000, the possibility of it holding that specific value for the next couple of years is a little bit, in my opinion, a gamble <laughs> because right now there's obviously the chip shortage portion. There's a new model coming out. So I would proceed with caution definitely for this last gen, especially because you can get this new one, even if you pay a little bit over MSRP, it's the newer version, so you're gonna be able to have a lot more equity in it, um, depending on how much you put down, things like that. So that's just my opinion on it. And then let's take a look at kind of just what the numbers are realistically now. So I'm here on cars.com. I just pulled up all the Type R's um, across the United States here. So let's sort it by the lowest price to see what the cheapest one is. Now, I'm sure some of these could be, um, have had like damage, things like that. They could be, um, you know, something along those lines. So that could be why they're really cheap. So definitely do your research before you, for example, like you see this $20,000 Civic Type R. That could be a salvage title, anything like that. So do your due diligence. Um, but let's skip past that because I get that impression that that deal is too good to be true and there might be something up with that car. Um, looking at this one here, I think this one's a little bit more realis realistic. So 37,500, this is a 2018 Honda Civic Type R with 67,000 miles on it. So the person that bought this car, let's say they bought it in 2017, let's say they're fortunate enough to pay, um, let's just say in this case, they did pay, you know, 38 for example, out the door with everything. And now they've put almost 70,000 miles on the car and they've, and it's basically selling for 37.5. Now the dealership probably didn't give them 30, or definitely didn't give them 37.5. We know that they have a buffer for like profit and things like that. So they probably maybe got like 31, 32, but then again, this car has almost 70,000 miles and that depreciation rate is definitely way better than what other cars could be. Again, we don't know what they actually got for it, but usually there's at least a couple thousand dollar difference between what the dealership gives you and what they're gonna sell it for so they can profit. Let's take a look at something a little bit more in the middle as far as pricing. All right, 2019. So this is selling for 41,981 and it has about 46,000 miles on it. So this person probably got 3536 for it. Dealership marked it up. They probably bought this car for let's just say 38. So it's pretty interesting to see kind of what, um, you know, these numbers are like in reality versus kind of looking at the chart that we were comparing. Um, the biggest, I'd say the biggest jump in what people are looking for is probably the 2019 to 2021. That's gonna have a little bit more updates to the car. Uh, let's take a look at the most expensive and kind of see like what's happening. <laughs> And mind you, this isn't including people that have put, let's say 10K down for the car, have been paying it down. They probably only owe 25 on the car, for example, but now it's selling for 42. Um, so it's very interesting to kind of see these figures. So basically this car is definitely one of those things you want to treat, um, you know, you want to calculate all the costs and potential costs and what you could lose um, depending on how much you pay. So that's the whole thing. Basically get this car as cheap as you can. Then it's a solid investment as far as, okay, at least you'll either break even or make a little bit of profit. But if you pay, you know, 10, 15, 20 K over, you're basically going to ruin that opportunity unless you're just upfronting that with, you know, your down payment and calling it a loss. So 
But those are my thoughts. Uh, definitely check out the playlist full of you know, other Honda content. I have some information about the 2023 Civic Type R. So feel free to check that out. Catch you in the next video. Peace.